G'day, it's SA Field Shooter here. Quite often, after making a video, I'm asked what kind of rifle do I use, calibre, scope amounts. Well, today I thought I'd give you a brief rundown of one of the rifles I'm about to use this afternoon. It's a 22-250 and it'll be used for ranges from about 400 to about 500 yards, maybe a bit more. First, we'll start with the rifle. It's a Seiko 85 laminated stainless steel varmint in 22-250 calibre. It has a five shot magazine, a 600mm stainless steel fluted barrel with an 11 degree muzzle crown. The stock is laminated and with nice fine cut checkering. The forearm is nice and flat on the bottom which enables a good steady rest on the sandbags. It is not a pure varmint stock but it certainly does the trick and is very stable when shooting long range. The stock also has a very generous palm swell on the right hand side. Okay, here's a better shot of the palm swell. As you can see, it certainly fills out the palm and is very comfortable. On the left hand side of the stock, we have a nice generous cheek piece. And once again, nice fine cut checkering. The forearm is generously free floated which is vital for keeping a good consistent point of, aim, point of aim when out in the field. The receiver is classified by Seiko as being a short style action, which is perfect for this length cartridge and for all 308 length cartridges. The trigger is classified as a single stage trigger. I have adjusted it to around one kilo pull let off and it also has a set trigger mechanism. Here's a single stage trigger. And now the set trigger. You push the trigger forward and you just touch off. I especially like the single set trigger, especially for long range shooting. The Seiko 85 is not classified as a push feed bolt action rifle, nor is it classified as a control round feed bolt action rifle. It sort of lies in between because when the bolt face picks up the head of the cartridge, it's, it snaps in securely into the extractor claw and pushes it right into the chamber. You'll see on the head of the bolt, there's a three lug configuration. It's extremely effective and gives a good solid lockup. Also, it provides, enables the bolt to only have a 60 degree lift, which is very handy if, you're, if you've got a large ocular lens scope or if you have your scope mounted low on the receiver. As I stated before, the magazine holds five rounds. It is of all metal construction and there is absolutely no plastic parts on this one. It, feeds from the magazine into the chamber reliably and I hardly ever have any hang-ups even when using the 22-250. The safety when engaged blocks both the trigger and the bolt lift but it has a small lever just in front of the safety that when depressed you can actually open the bolt and remove if there are any remove any cartridges that are in the chamber. Put on the safety now, you see the bolt and the serial and the trigger are locked. But if I want to open up the bolt for any reason, I can push that small lever just here, which allows me to open the bolt and extract any cartridges there whilst still in the safe position. The 85 wears a 600mm 1 in 14 stainless steel fluted varmint weight barrel with an 11 degree dish crown. About the only criticism I have of this rifle is 
After purchasing it, when I examined the crown, the edge of the crown, I noticed that around the very edge of the rifling, there was it was rather sloppily done by the factory. So I got the local gunsmith just to touch it up a little, and now it's nice and sharp and it shoots great. Well that's it for the rifle. To say that I'm impressed with the 85 is an understatement. I feel it's a nicely balanced, well functioning and very accurate rifle to use for long range shooting. I chose Seikos and I mainly shoot Seikos simply because after almost a lifetime of buying other brand rifles and having to have spend up to a thousand dollars getting them to shoot straight, I finally got sick of it and decided to go all out and get a Seiko so at least I knew it's going to shoot well and it's going to function properly straight out of the box. Finally, we have the scope. It's a Leupold VX3 6.5 to 20 by 50 long range target. It has a 30 millimeter tube and it has the varmint rectangle. This scope comes with target style graduated tire caps with graduations ranging from 0.25 MOA for one click. Also on the left hand side of the scope you have another turret which is used for adjusting parallax which is very important when you're shooting extended ranges past the 500 yard mark. Here we have a somewhat distorted view of the varmint rectangle. The top crosshairs are sighted in for 200 yards, the second crosshair is 300, the third 400 and the bottom one is 500 yards. Each crosshair has two dots on either side. The first dot and that the first dot is for 10 mile per hour wind drift, the second dot for 20 mile per hour wind drift and it follows through for the rest of the rectangles. Finally, we have the ammunition. It's Hornady's Varmint Express with a 55 grain ballistic tip projectile. The muzzle velocity of this round from a 24 inch barrel or 600 mil barrel if you like, is 3,680 feet per second. Sighted in at 200 yards, it will have a 5.2 inch drop at 300, a 15.9 inch drop at 400, and a 33.9 inch drop at 500. This ammo will group at around 0.65 of an inch at 100 yards for three shots, which is pretty good for what I want it to do. Although Winchester ballistic silver tip ammunition in 55 grain does group better for three shots, for example, around 0.5 or 0.45 to about 0.5, this horn of the ammunition will suit me fine. Besides, it's all I can get at the moment, so, well, I've got to be happy with it. Well that concludes a brief description of the rifle, mounts and scope combination that I use for tagging ferrules from 400 out to 600 yards. Well I'm off to the bush now, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.
Yep, and this is what happens when you run out of ammo. Oh, you'll keep for another day.